Welcome to another episode of Optimal Health for Busy Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Julian A. Sasekin, back at it again. And today's episode is an important one as we're taking the steps to building a personalized anti-aging and performance strategy. And simply put, this is your plan that is designed not only to help you perform well in life, but also in business, also in fitness, and also in your relationships. And then even more, it's a plan that also offers up the tactics and the blueprint to helping you achieve a long health span, lifespan, and a well span. It's this trifecta that is essential to a good life. So we're talking about longevity. And you may be inclined to think of expensive toys, various biohacks, and having to know the right people who are involved in this world now. And to a certain extent, that's a little bit true. But I always remind people and even remind myself at times that nothing is free in this world. You either pay now or potentially you're going to pay even more later down the road. It's kind of like a credit card where there's a balance on it. You don't pay it at the end of the month and interest continues to build up on it. That's kind of how it is when you think about health and longevity. So I wanted to make this episode. We're nearing the end of the year. And with that comes reflection and also it comes preparation for the upcoming year. And health is always something at the forefront of thought as we reflect and forecast out. And building an anti-aging and performance blueprint is what I believe the future of health looks like and should be like, very personalized, very in of one. And this encompasses things such as your fitness and your nutrition, of course, and body composition as a whole. This is fitness 101 right here, right? But we also want to include things such as our brain health, cellular health, and in general, it's just the each of the hallmarks of aging. And these types of programs are much more future focused and prevention is a priority along with the enhancement, which is a stage of health that is very rarely discussed at this time. So, I mean, my SOAP program is something that is built on these very principles. It's a group approach as it's not just me, but it said it includes peers as well. You know, each person is whiteboarded. So you have all this data and then every single person is going to be whiteboarded and you're having multiple people look at your data where you are and where you want to be. And these are different experts in different areas of health. So you can reach out to me for more information on that. But Regardless, I want to leave you today with three practical steps so you can begin building your personalized longevity strategy right this very moment. You know, there's a lot of potential tools and tactics that you can use, all very beneficial, but those are merely part of the bigger picture. So without further ado, let's dive into step one of the strategy, and that is simply to know your risk. Now, in war, knowing your enemy is vitally important. Of course, you got to know who you're going up against, who you're fighting. But what's also equally important is knowing thyself, knowing thy strengths, knowing thy weaknesses. What's the potential chokehold and things that could bring your entire operation down? And in health, this is no different. We're all similar, but yet we're all different. It's holding two ideas in one hand. We're all different, even if it's only a fraction. That fraction of a difference is astronomical. And when we think about optimization, when we think about enhancement, covering the basics is a given. That's more than taken care of. But to get to this next level and to achieve these uncommon results and to stand out amongst the many, to get better with time while others are declining with time, putting your detective hat on is vitally important. So that's why the first step here in building your plan is to assess your personal and specific longevity risk. Now, there's a few ways to approach this exercise. And your approach depends on the type of investment that you want to make. Also, how much time and energy are you willing to put into your health and longevity? And when I say investments, it's not just monetary that I'm talking about here. If you're serious about leveraging the latest advances in longevity technologies, you have to know what you're willing to invest And you have to know this up front at the start. You know, as a general goal, I think it goes around, you know, commit to to dedicating around 10 to 15% of your waking hours of time here. This is your energy. 
So your focus, your learning abilities, capacities, and income on developing and executing on this longevity strategy. Now, there's a lot of fluidity in how you divide up this pie here. And you can leverage income if you're time constrained. And then you don't have to invest all this extra time in learning about the various longevity technologies and things that you can use. And when I say time, this is setting aside space for various levels of exercise, researching on your health, appointments with medical professionals, anything you're doing in the effort to maximize your health span, your wealth span, and your lifespan. Now, to summarize this step, though, very simply, something that you can think of as you're knowing thy risk is look at your personal and family medical history. Look at genetic analysis, various lifestyle factors. Go back through the family tree. What did a lot of your family members pass away from? What are some of the potential illnesses that came up a lot frequently inside your family? That's a pretty decent indication of some of the things that could potentially show up for you first and foremost, should your lifestyle slide off a little bit. And an example of this, if we're looking at real-time action here, is identifying an inherent genetic propensity for a heart attack at a relatively long, young age, or knowing that you have a copy of an APOE4 gene, which elevates, uh, all, which can elevate Alzheimer's risk later on in life, cognitive decline. And for many others, you know, even if you have these things, it doesn't mean it's your destiny at all. For example, for me, my risk in uh, blood sugar dysregulators is sky high, according to my genetic report, but my labs indicate something totally different. And I also come from a family with various cardiovascular problems um, on, on my father's side, but it's not my destiny. It's clues to my past, but I can still mold the future. But it's good to know this information in the past so I can know what potential things may come up and what I need to pay a little more attention to compared to others. So step two here is to manage and prioritize your risk. So once you identify these risks, you identify these situations that are present and present the biggest issues for you, it's time to create an action plan. And you want to create an action plan on how you're going to address each of these specific situations. Now, when we talk about managing the risk, this means that you are either reducing the consequences or the likelihood of a known risk to your longevity and performance. So when you're getting started, and to prevent overwhelm, and also, most importantly, increase the likelihood of long-term success and compliance on the plan, you don't want to try to manage and work on every single risk or issue or situation that is identified from the very start. That's a recipe for disaster. Instead, it's I recommend for you to prioritize just two to three of the top situations, the most paramount situations, the most, the ones that are most glaring and stand out to you. And this is how I go about coaching clients. We collect a ton of data, a lot of data. It's a lot. But I break these things down into immediate goals, short-term goals, medium goals, and long-term goals. And this helps us chunk that information and is much more digestible. So an example here can be someone with a propensity for blood sugar issues, better known as you can say insulin resistance or metabolic health, whichever word you want to use. They're kind of intertwined with each other. So this person also has an elevated fasting glucose and they have a high A1C and they have a pretty high fasting insulin. And so a great first step for someone in this situation here is to start making simple dietary changes, perhaps through eating fewer refined carbohydrates or adding more quality protein and vegetables into their dietary regimen to reduce that risk from further compounding and influencing other areas of the human system. And after all, when we think about carbohydrates and the issue with sugar, and I talked about this on a, a few previous episodes, is the more glycation that you have, the faster your body is going to age and the higher the risk of aging related diseases or situations, as I call them, the higher that they are going to be paramount and affect those various hallmarks of aging. So for step three here, it is simply time to amplify. This is where things get exciting. And if I'm quite honest, this is where most people want to start. It's the exciting stuff. And this is the step, the stage where you truly start to optimize 
and enhance your health span, your wealth span, and your lifespan. Before now, we were mainly focused on bringing, your, bringing you into a state of homeostasis and balance. You started off in this optimization longevity journey. You started off a little unbalanced. Something was off in your system. And so you worked on that and you brought it up to homeostasis. So everything's even kill. Now it's time to move into optimizing the system. And even after that, enhancing the system. And so this is the stage now where many high-tech toys can come into play here. You can run a series of various blood tests. You can run a biological age, a biological age test to self-experiment to improve your various biomarkers that are associated with aging. You can also run a micronutrient test to identify deficiencies in your everyday dietary regimen. And this would further help you modify your supplement and dietary regimen. Now, I will say, if you're going to use a micronutrient test, I would recommend beforehand to use an app to track your food. One of my favorites that I always recommend is something called Chronometer. And it'll have your micronutrients on there and track your food for a while so you can know how you're eating and then put that up against the test. And then you have something to baseline on that on. And then when you go back again, you can make those improvements and you have data that you initially started with. So you, you want to make sure that you do the preliminary work up front in these first two steps so that you can make sure that you're not wasting time, you're not wasting money, and you're not wasting energy on supplements and various tests that aren't necessarily right for you at the moment. A biological age test is a very valuable test. I love it. However, it doesn't mean that it's for everyone at the very start. You know, life is about sequencing. Everything needs to move in sequencing and harmony. That is ideal. So a biological age test may be number one for one individual that comes in, but for the other individual, there's a lot of other things that are more paramount than the biological age test. So they're going to have that maybe number four or five on the list. So really take time to work on those first two steps. So as we land this ship here, executing all three of these steps in sequential order is vitally important. I cannot harp on this enough because they do very much build upon each other. So when you execute in the sequential order, this ensures that you are much more precise with your various health inputs and as a time constrained individual who is dealing with some of the dark sides of success. You are in demand, you have a lot of responsibilities, you have a family and you have many, many other things on top of the various ever growing ambition that you have towards your career. Precision is an absolute necessity for your life. Hoping and guessing is not an option for you. Hoping and guessing is not an option for you if enhancement is a goal for you. So with all of this said, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. I definitely appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. So thank you again. If I can be of any assistance, don't hesitate to reach out on, don't hesitate to reach out to me on social or through email. So stay awesome, be limitless, and as always, go be superhuman. Peace.